Intel's next CPUs are getting benchmarked. Epic Games is making stuff that's not Apple free and A, uh, if you're running Windows, you got a bug for your Ryzen CPUs. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, August 16th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about the new Arrow Lake benchmarks that are popping up, but also the discussion that new Z890 motherboards are supposed to be making their debut at Gamescom next week. Z890 Tomahawk should be shown off. The Mag Pro and MPG Edge were already shown off at Computex, and so yet another Z890 being showed off and this is going to support the next generation era like cpus it's an lga 1851 socket but now we have new benchmarks coming out of the Ultra 7 and Ultra 5 versions of the Arrow Lake CPUs, the 265KF and 245K, 245K. How am I supposed to read these? I gotta make that somewhat better. But the numbers are coming out and the benchmarks seem to be like, especially considering how disappointing Ryzen 9000 has been, the Ultra 7's kinda in line with the Ryzen 7. On single core score, it's within a few percentage points. On multi-core, it does appear to be beat it and it looks like it's about four percent faster than the 14900k which seems to be a good thing especially in lieu of recent rumors that have come out saying that arrow lake should be about a hundred watts more efficient than the current raptor lake setup that's out there whether or not that holds true we are seeing some benchmarks that are indicating that the performance of the next generation core ultra arrow lake cpu should be at least on par with where we're at with ryzen 7 and 9000 which is as good as we're gonna get it if you bought a CPU three years ago, you're in the same position as everybody else trying to buy one new right now. Unless you want AVX 512. In case you want AVX 512, Ryzen 9000 is crazy good, insane. So you can enjoy that if you're one of the few AVX 512 enjoyers out there. But if you're an enjoyer of working on the go, you should check out today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Sosu and their 14 and 16 inch portable monitors. Sosu has managed to merge beautiful design, top of the line features and great portability. Flat packing down to just half an inch thick makes these monitors ideal for digital nomads and people on the go. I cannot tell you how upset I was that these came in the day after I left for vacation because I would have brought it to be a companion to my laptop while I'm here. But it's not just the size and the screen, they also feature a built-in SD card slot, a single USB-C for both power and display, passed through 100 watt charging, and then it's got the LG display panel with 99% DCI-P3 color gamut. So Sosu delivered on premium features while maintaining simplicity. And in addition to the MacBook Pro quality screen, Sosu monitors also boast a fully CNC machine body with round smooth edges and a sleek anodized finish, giving the same loved and familiar feel of a MacBook Pro. And Sosu continues to deliver unique portable monitor features with their patent pending hinge and swivel mechanism, allowing for easy height and angle adjustment, being able to both swap between landscape and portrait displays with flip action rotation, as well as extending vertically far enough to arrange above your laptop screen sets Sosu's portable monitors in a class of their own. And if multiple displays are what you need, Sosu supports supports daisy chaining to an additional QHD or FHD display. So you can check out Sosu and their family of stylish and functional portable monitors via the link in the description. Thanks to Sosu for sponsoring today's video. Well, with one of those Sosu monitors, you can check out the Alt Store Pal, which is one of the alternative app stores that was made available over in the EU on iPhones, thanks to all of the digital market acts and the movements that have been going on from the EU commission over there, forcing Apple's hand with this. But one of the key criticisms that came out with the alt store was the fact that you had to pay for it because Apple would charge the alt store a core technology fee, which then they wanted to pass off to the consumer so that Apple can get paid no matter what. And in a dramatic twist of not quite irony, it turns out that Epic Games is going to be picking up the tab for alt store with their mega grant that will cover the Apple core technology fee, make the alt store pal fully free over in the EU for anybody who wants to use it. And it just means that Tim Sweeney's money is is lining the pockets of Tim Cook, which if you've ever read Tim Sweeney on Twitter, he is probably not super happy about it, but also is doing this because he believes that the alt store is fundamental to releasing Apple's firm grisp, uh, grasp, grisping grasp on iOS. And Reese has a firm grisp on me as to whether or not he's doing deals today. He didn't do it yesterday because South Africa thinks he lost power, you know, 
It happens. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good week and hopefully you have a good start to your weekend with these deals. Starting off, we have a refurbished MSI Mag Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4 LGA 1700 ATX motherboard going for only $44.99 after the $60 rebate, which is nutty. But then next up, we have the Sama SVO2 Dual. This mid-tower ATX case comes with three of their ARGB Infinity Mirror fans that look gorgeous for only $65.99 for the combo. And then lastly, we have this ASRock Phantom 27-inch 1440p 165Hz VA gaming monitor with built-in speakers and a Wi-Fi antenna for only $169.99, making it $70 off. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, turns out that there's a deal going on with the new Ryzen 9000 benchmarks and Windows hardware unbox breaking the news that they've talked with AMD and found out that there is a bug in Windows that is causing all of the Ryzen 9000 CPUs to be underperforming in benchmarks. But if you watch the video by Steve, who's sitting down, which means things are okay, you don't have to worry as much as when Steve is standing, it turns out that all of this affected Ryzen 7. 7,000 benchmarks as well, because it appears that there's a Windows 11 bug that makes it so that if you're not in an actual administrative account, whether or not you're using administrator mode or using administrator positions, the Ryzen CPUs appear to have a little hiccup there that decreases their performance. So Steve and the hardware and box team went through and re-benchmarked a lot of different things with the 9700X and found that, yeah, on average, 6% higher FPS, but that also meant that the 7700X got four FPS higher across their average testing, which meant that the 7700X performed like the 9700X if you didn't use this account. So this is something that AMD is saying that they're working with people on. It's supposed to be addressed in an upcoming Microsoft Windows update. And there's a few different things that AMD says you can do to work around it in the meantime, whether that's uninstalling and reinstalling the chipset drivers. But one of the things to, to know is that you probably don't want to be in the system administrator account on a regular basis. It's the top pin comment on Hardware Unbox and their video makes it worse if you get infected with malware. So potentially just hold off until the Windows patch that actually fixes these issues. But one of the things to note is that this affects not just Ryzen 9000. This does make its performance better and does kind of improve its standing versus Ryzen 7000, but not in a way that ultimately changes the conversation about the weirdness that we're seeing with Ryzen 9000, like the higher between quarter latencies that are being found out by a non-tech and the testing that Ryan Smith has been doing. There's a lot of weirdness with it, especially on the Ryzen 9 chips. So uh, don't think that this is actually gonna fix everything, but if you're on Ryzen 7000 using Windows 11, you probably need to update as well, and you might get some free performance for that. And you're getting my free attention based on what you said in yesterday's episode of Hot News over on Floatplane. Little Nikki Scarfo saying, I ponder the day when AMD gets enough of a market share that developers of Windows and other OSs overcome some of these issues we have with core parking and other performance metrics great time to talk about it. I mean, it is being addressed. It doesn't appear like they're working as hand in hand as let's say a Qualcomm and a Microsoft with their big Copilot Plus launch or like Intel and Microsoft with thread director implementation. But it's not as if they're getting fully ignored. It just appears that they, they get the leftovers of the resources between Qualcomm, Intel and then AMD is gonna be at the very bottom, even though AMD is the one who's increasing in market share, both on desktop and on mobile, making it so that they're they're going to actually have uh, important stakes in the future, but Intel still by and large on the vast majority of Windows-based devices at this point. And then over on YouTube, Next Evolution saying, it is really impressive how Disney's legal term and or department finds new ways of being just evil as their movie villains. I read that weird, but a funny comment. Then Bear Taco saying, forced arbitration is the most ridiculous thing lawyers have come out with, but more importantly, the second follow-up comment, which got more likes, um, Brett has legs? Is butt legs? Butt legs? No, I don't like where I'm going with this. Tad Mikowski saying, thumbs up if cam focus doesn't matter because you're watching on your phone in 144p potato mode to save battery. I'm curious, 
how do you watch hot news? Is it on your phone? Is it on the laptop? Is it on the desktop? Is it on the television? And for some of you miscreants, the couple people out there, you're, you're still using BlackBerry OS. How are you watching these episodes of hot news and what resolution do you typically watch it in? I'm curious to hear. And then the real Phil G saying, the best part is Brett using a video to cook cereal. I'm glad somebody noticed that when we were talking about <laughs> finding a recipe on YouTube while you're trying to prepare. I, there, there is a couple things cut out of this because it just didn't have time. I like tried to pretend like I was boiling the kettle and like pouring that into the cereal and then I tried to like drink out of the kettle. All that had to be cut, but I did have a little bit of fun with the ad spot. That's one of the reasons why uh, one of the episodes this week was out of focus because I had certain things in manual focus for filming that kind of stuff. And then we got Carl's Bad Gaming PC saying, Please do not call 2019 half a decade ago. It hurts. It hurts so much. That is exactly why we do it. When you say half a decade ago, it just makes people think that it's way longer, but no, we're talking about 2019. 1650 came out then. The RTX 20 Super Series came out then. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles. They're all half a decade old at this point, friends. You just gotta get used to time ticking and slipping. And I'm gonna slip on out of here. This episode of Hot News is done. We'll be back with more of the hottest tech news on Monday.